أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله إن إن الحمد إن الحن إن إن الحمد لله نحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شر أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله لما صلي وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه التابعين بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يقول الله سبحانه بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الحق تقاتوا لا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول أيضا يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقول سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا لو قولوا قولا سيد يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praise be to Allah. We thank Him. We seek His help and take, and we seek His forgiveness. Uh, we bear witness there is no deity worthy worship except Allah. Praise and glory be to Him, and that Muhammad is the seal of messengers. May peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, his family, his companions, and those who followed his path under the day of judgment. Allah says in the Holy Quran, "Who you believe, revere Allah with due reverence, and do not die except state of Islam." Allah says. Again, O mankind, revere your God and Lord who created you from a single person, created all like nature he's made, and from them twain scattered like seeds, countless men and women. Fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual right and reverence. The womb that bore you for Allah ever watches over you. O you believe, fear Allah, and always say a word directed to the right that he may make your conduct whole and sound and forgive your sins. He that obeys Allah and his messenger has already attained the highest achievement. O oh, you believe, be conscious of Allah and speak in straightforward manners. He will rectify your conduct for you and will forgive you your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has won a great victory. Brothers and sisters, it's always a great pleasure to uh, meet you again in our second lecture in this pre-marriage uh, course introduction. And uh, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are in the best state of health and iman as well, especially in this condition we are living in in our days. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and those uh, around us and everywhere in the world, inshallah, and those who are ill, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them a quick recovery and those who passed away may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon their souls Amen. and give their families and their friends patience and a great reward the uh, second uh, lecture which uh, introduced this pre-marriage course and uh, I remind you that the uh, the course is uh, meant for uh, those who are not married yet. Of course, those who are married, they can, uh, uh, it's a reminder for them. And of course, they can benefit as well, as much as the one who are not married as well. And of course, it's an introduction to marriage in Islam. The course is a must for every single person over 18 years old who has never been married. The course is going to ask with the purpose of providing information an early exposure to prospective spouses to encourage them for marriage. It's hopes that the course can be a comprehensive guide in dealing with their future family life. Of course, in this uh, ABZCT limited cohort, we that this course will help in reducing the reason why young adults are not getting married early and the problems of marriage and divorce faced by Muslims in general and I think by everybody in the world as well. And of course, you can apply uh, for this uh, course as well by sending a request by email text. And you can find this on www.abzconsultancytraining.com uh, uh, and email info at abzconsultancytraining.com. Uh, and how, what you will learn, how you select your spouse, Islamic understanding of marriage, parenting, child development, 
what will gain from the course to manage and drive safely your family in this life to the hereafter. Ami. Now, the uh, one of the most important thing is uh, the qualities you be looking for uh, your uh, wife or your future husband, and this is valid for men and women as well. Now, بناء الزواج على طاعة الله عز وجل, and this will go for a nice story. قصة زواج القاضي شريح. May Allah be pleased with him. The building of marriage on obedience to Allah Almighty. The story of Judge Shuraih marriage. And of course, we said last week that marriage is half of your faith and fear Allah on the other half. الزواج شطر من الإيمان والتقي الله في الشطر الآخر. Therefore, it's an act of worship, and it consists fifty percent of your life as well because you if once you are married you have children you spend a lot of of your time and everything and your life uh, this therefore that's where you get more reward from everything what you do with your wife how you when you get married you get a reward even one who marry get more reward in his prayer than the one who is not married therefore uh, when you get children you get more reward spending your children looking after them up bringing them until they get married everything and this is all there for you. Therefore, the marriage, one of the main pillar of marriage is it should be built on obedience to Allah Almighty. Therefore, you always seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever you do. Therefore, bina al zawaj ala ta'ati Allah azza wa jal. And we'll go through some of the stories. The... Uh, the most sacred of all bonds or covenant on the face of earth is the bond of marriage. In Aqdas Aqd ala wajhi al-ard, Aqdu al-zawaj. And how could you take it while you have gone into each each other and they have taken from you a solemn covenant? Allah says in the Holy Quran, وَكَيْفَ صُرْتَ النِّسَاءَ وَكَيْفَ تَأْخُذُونَهُ وَقَدْ أَفْضَى بَعْضُكُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضِي وَأَخَذْنَا مِنْكُمْ مِيثَاقٍ غَلِيظًا And he... Uh, uh, make it a very strong bond, this marriage between a wife and husband as well. Now, the, uh, as I said before, therefore, it's a, a very strong uh, bondage between a wife and husband. And of course, when you marry, you will follow the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Those are your two guides as well. Allah, praise and glory be to him, has made his verse an indication of his might and greatness regarding a cosmic creation, formative creation, and Quranic verses. Ayatun kawniya, wa ayatun taqwiniya, wa ayatun qur'aniya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rum, verse 21, chapter 30, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَادٍ لِتَسْكُنُ إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً and among his signs is this that he created for, for you mates from among yourselves that you may dwell in tranquility with them and he has put love and mercy between your hearts. Verily in that are signs for those who reflect. For therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it one of his signs of the creation, this marriage and how he bring two uh, male and female, man and woman together for a sake and bring this love and this mercy together for them to be and to live in tranquility and dwell in tranquility as well. Now, second, Comfort to each other, each party complement it's shortage with the other part, so that the two spouses are complementary. Therefore, wife and husband are not here to compete within one another, but they are to complement each other as well. It's like a teamwork. The, uh, and it's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put emphasis about this tranquility and how he created this love and this mercy between each other therefore when you live between 
uh, and you deal with each other, love in on its on itself is not enough. It has to be messy because we commit wrong and sometimes we do wrong to each other. And of course, if you don't forgive and you are not merciful, the relationship cannot be uh, established. And Allah is the most merciful because He knows His creation that we commit sins and we can, we make all kind of wrongdoings. But Allah is as long as you recognize what you have done and you stop what are you doing wrong and you seek and you uh, uh, and you seek forgiveness from the other person, then that's how the relationship can be always established and reestablish it again after any uh, problem. Now the uh, therefore a husband and wife are complementary and not alike. Therefore a man role and a woman role complement each other. الزوج والزوجة متكاملين وليس متماثلين. They are not like each other. For therefore they complement each other in their roles uh, uh, in uh, the family. And the biggest reason of the marriage happiness, uh, the marriage happiness between believers that Allah is between the married couples. Allah, that is Allah is between them as each side fears Allah in oppressing the other and and the husband and the wife seeks the mercy of Allah by being generous to each other. Therefore, أحد أكبر أسباب السعادة الزوجين سعادة الزوجين بين المؤمنين المؤمنين هي أن الله بين الزوجين معنى أن الله بينهما أي أن كل طرف يخشى الله أن يظلم الطرف الآخر وأن كل طرف يرجو رحمة الله بكرمة بكرام الطرف الآخر. Therefore, you are seeking the pleasure of Allah and to be merciful to each other that Allah will be merciful to you as well. Now, the uh, as I said before, we go to this uh, beautiful story. The story of the husband who did not divorce. A, uh, this is a story. Uh, his wife, even though she fell ill with an illness with two weeks of her marriage and kept caring for her by spending his money for uh, even from the, even by selling his house, although his father told her, uh, her father told him to divorce her. But he said, I will keep with my wife and I love her and I will look after her although she was ill. And the story of the husband who was looked after his wife after he was paralyzed and the woman uh, kept with him and stayed even in those four worse and very difficult condition as well. And this is our uh, uh, stories which repeat themselves as well because of that bond of marriage, love and mercy. And there are a lot of other, uh, uh, I think, uh, marriages we can speak about. And these stories and many of them indicate how important is faith in the belief in Allah and praise and glory to Him in any relation, especially marriage, and we should stop always self-criticizing ourselves and always keep always to look to the advantages of this the marriages and the advantage of my wife or her, you are my husband as well and always play down the disadvantages as well. Now, of course, the, uh, uh, the marriage itself, uh, always you have to look to the positive things, like ni'am. Whenever we face difficulties in life, we should not be looking just to the difficulties, we should be looking to the bounties which God has given us. And uh, if you are, uh, uh, mashallah, well in your health, if you want to see the bounties of Allah, go to the hospital and see those who are ill as well. And of course, always look to those who are below you, not those who are uh, higher than you as well. And therefore, you can appreciate what God has given you as well. Assalamu alaikum Abdul Ghani, Salah, Anan, all of them, Jazakumullah khair for watching, inshallah. Look always in your life for positives and advantages as well. And this is, uh, uh, of course, the uh, uh, there is a lot of stories we can uh, look at and we have to uh, take those stories as experiences as well. How many parents have spent a lot of money to, in order to marry his children as well and make sure that they have a happy life and buy for them or uh, rent for them a flat or something like this. 
And in our countries, Muslim country, there are still a lot of good things happening as well. And of course, we should appreciate that uh, bounties which we have got within our uh, Muslim uh, countries uh, as well. Of course, marriage, we spoke about that the man and woman complement each other. We should look to the bounties. We should be merciful in our relationships, forgiving always. Uh, look to the, always the good side for anything. Therefore, always look to the uh, half full cup, not the half empty cup. One of the condition of the validity of marriage act is that it should be forever. Therefore, marriage, uh, marriage is, I mean, شروط عقد الزواج أن يكون على التأبيد. Therefore, one of the uh, the condition that of marriage, the marriage when we marry, mar we marry forever. It's not a temporary marriage. Therefore, marriage is for ever. It's not zawajul muta, what we say, just to fulfill our desires for a moment and then we for and we then there we live and we divorce and all this kind. Marriage is forever. Therefore, you have to get your best choice. Of course, we are talking about the qualities to look for in a spouse. So therefore, get the best while you're still looking for the best as well. So therefore, marriage is for uh, forever. Looking for a righteous wife who, if you look at her, she makes you happy. If you are absent, she keeps her trust. And when you order her to do something, she obeys you. أبحث عن زوجة صالحة إذا نظرت إليها سرتك وإذا غبت عليها حفظتك and this is some of the qualities you have to look for. Yes, those are very, very important as well when you are deciding about your future wife. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, الدنيا متاع وخير متاع الدنيا المرأة الصالحة. This life is a pleasure and the best of its pleasure is a righteous and a good woman. And it can be vice versa, of course, for a right man as well. For therefore, the Prophet spoke about women because the woman uh, has more uh, important because looking, uh, bringing children, you know, looking after the house and all this. For her role is bigger as well. And uh, therefore, he described the pleasure of this life is uh, having a righteous and a good woman as well. Now, uh, one of the other aspects as well, quality to look for in spouse, is competence in marriage between the bridegroom and the groom, between the wife, future wife and husband, the bridegroom and the groom. أبحث عن الكفاءة الدينية والعلمية والنفسية والاجتماعية والمالية بين الزوجين. Look similar competencies in religion, knowledge, psychology, sociology, and finance. The truth is that women in their intellectual structure, physical, psychological, and social characters are an absolute perfection of the mission entrusted to them. And same, similarly, the intellectual and physical and social and psychological characteristics of men are an absolute perfection of the mission entrusted to them by, uh, uh, by Allah, religion. So therefore, both of them, man and woman, have been created, equipped to deal with their mission, with their job. They have a job description, complementary job description, and God has given them this knowledge and psychology, sociology, and finance, which they can deal and they can uh, perform their roles in life uh, uh, complementary between them. And therefore, man is for, has a, a job description and woman has, uh, has a job description as well. Therefore, Equality between women and men in honor, commissioning a responsibility. مساواة المرأة للرجل في التشريف 
والتكليف والمسؤولية therefore man and woman are equal as far as in honor as far as in commissioning and responsibility for therefore they are similar to each other and equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the special characteristic of the female and male are a guarantee for peace and security of the society therefore khasa'is it mutamayza lil untha wa dhakar dhamanu li salamati al-mujtama therefore Allah has created this complementarity and it's why Adam he was wandering around in Jannah God created Eve uh, our mother uh, uh, from him to be a second to be tranquil and to bring love between each other therefore this kind of uh, natural uh, instinct Allah has implanted them in the man and the woman for therefore the the characteristic of man and the characteristic specific to woman are a guarantee for peace and security of the society when we start mixing the two and women start becoming like uh, behaving like a man or a man behaving like a woman then then that's where the problem start occurring because we will be going out of order and it's like uh, you design a car and uh, the car is meant to uh, uh, what we call r run on the road and you take that car and you want to run it uh, drive it uh, in the sea it's not designed for that therefore it will drown same thing that's well man and uh, a woman have been designed by Allah to have specific roles and uh, responsibilities in life and they should uh, 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 should act on those uh, uh, instinct which God has given us and the job description uh, Allah has given us and therefore they complement each other and they are not competing which with each other now uh, uh, this topic of matching competencies between couples and marriage therefore when you are looking for a wife it's why therefore you have to always uh, look for somebody who has the same competence same experiences so therefore for example uh, if she's uh, at the university level uh, you are uh, or he is in university level you should be looking for a sister who's at the university level because she has the same experience as you she has been on the uh, university for a degree on this minimum of three years of course those are all very very important in comp uh, competency in professional competencies qualities character all this kind of religious characters all those we'll talk about them later on as well now the uh, this is a, a very beautiful uh, story from our uh, 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 what we call uh, 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 from our books old books as well and history the story of the judge uh, Shuraih radiallahu an Qisad Zawaj al Qadi Shuraih he said uh, how the marriage can be built and this uh, story uh, gives you an idea uh, about how you build your marriage as well. قال وكيف ذلك يا شور قال خطبت امرأة من أسرة صالحة فلما كان يوم الزفاف وجدت صلاحا وكمالا يقصد صلاحا في دينها وكمال في خلقها. The story of the judge of Shuraih, how the marriage can be built. Shuraih said, I ask the hand of a woman from a righteous family. When the wedding came, I found righteousness and perfect character. That is, righteousness in her religion and perfect physical beauty. Therefore, he complemented the two. Religion and her physical beauty. We'll go to the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and when he spoke about تُنْكَحُ الْمَرْأَ لِجَمَالِهَا وَمَالِهَا وَنَسَبِهَا وَدِينِ هَفَثْرِحْ بِذَاتِ دِينِ ثَرِبَتْ يَدَكْ Therefore the wife is, or the husband as well is looked or married uh, for those four characteristics about beauty, wealth, uh, uh, family status and religion character, religious character and this he said take the one with the religious character 
Now, uh, Shuraih, uh, he's a judge, he's an attorney, therefore he was a well knowledgeable person. Therefore, he spoke about her righteousness and he chose it from a righteous family. Therefore, therefore, when you are looking for a wife, look for her family as well. Therefore, the family is very important as well. Now, he said, I pray two raka'at to thank Allah. Therefore, the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is somebody when he married on the day of marriage or the wedding day, the, uh, uh, the man uh, or woman should be given two uh, raka'at, two unit prayer uh, to thank Allah for the marriage as well and to ask the blessing of this marriage as well. He said, فَصَلَّيْتُ رَكْعَتَيْنِ شُكْرًا لِلَّهِ عَلِ النِّعْمَةِ الزَّوْجِ الصَّالِحَةِ فَلَمَّا سَلَّمْتُ مِنْ صَلَاتِي وَجَدْتُ وَيَوْجَتِي تُصَلِّي بِصَلَاتِي وَتُسَلِّمُ بِسَلَامِي وَتَشْكُرْ شُكْرِي فَلَمَّا خَلَى الْبَيْتِ مِنَ الْأَهْلِ وَالْأَحْبَابِ دَنَوْتُ مِنْهَا He said, I pray two raka'at to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise and glory be to him, for the bounty of having a righteous wife. When I finished my prayer, I found my wife praying and thanking Allah, praising glory be to him, as I did. And when the house was empty for, from guests, that is family and friends, I came close to her. فقالت لي على رسلك يا أبا أمية أي أنتظر فقامت فخطبت قالت أما بعد يا أبا أمية إني امرأة غريبة لا أعرف ما تحب ولا ما تكره look this woman because she has a good background as well and knowledgeable about, about Islam and about marriage as well فشي said to him wait O Abu Umayya father of Umayya she nicknamed him give him a, a name of father of Umayya that's how we nickname the uh, uh, father with a male usually, Anna Abu Yusuf, for example. Uh, she stood and gave a speech. He said, O oh, Abu Umayya, Shuraih, I am a stranger to you and I do not know what you like or dislike. On the day of the wedding, on the night, she asked this question. She said, I'm a stranger to you, I've never seen you before. We, we, okay, you know me from the, my family. You have seen me before you got married because he saw her and then he asked her hand. And she doesn't know what he likes and what he dislikes. But therefore, you should open up those topics as well. Therefore, she told him, I am a stranger to you and I do not know what you like or dislike. فقل ما تحب حتى آتيه وما تكر حتى أجتنبه ويا أبا أمية قد كان لك من نساء قومك من هو كفء لك وكان لي من رجال قومي من هو كفء لي ولكن كنت لك زوجة على كتاب الله وسنة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم She said tell me what you like so that I do it and what you dislike so that I avoid it and oh أبا أمية you may have a woman from your own people who is equivalent to you. And I might have an equivalent or suitable man from my own people, my family, she meant. However, I became your wife according to the book of Allah, praise and glory be to him, and the sunnah and tradition of the Prophet and Messenger of Allah, peace and blessing upon him. For she reminded him again, tell me what you like, therefore I do it, and what you dislike, I don't do it. And she said to him again, look, you may have a chance to marry a woman from your own family, your tribe, equivalent to you. And I might have a chance to marry a man from my own tribe, my family, equivalent to me. But Allah has brought us, she reminded him again, brought us together uh, according, and this marriage is according to the book of Allah, first guidance, and the sunnah and tradition of Prophet, peace be upon him. For therefore, the woman had knowledge and she had an understanding. So that Allah, so that Allah has decreed this marriage and it happened. Fear Allah in dealing with me and follow Allah's saying. 
she said ليقضي الله أمرا كان مفعولا فاتق الله في وامتثل قول الله سبحانه وتعالى and she uh, quoted uh, 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 a verse from سورة العمران الطلاق مرتان فإمساك بمعروف أو تسريح بإحسان ولا يحل لكم أن تأخذوا مما أتيتموهن أن تأخذوا ما مما أتيتموهن شيئا and she put this quote divorce twice then either keep her in acceptable manner or release her with good treatment and it is not lawful for you to take anything off what you have given them unless both fear that you will not be able to keep within the limits of Allah this is from the Quran and of course this uh, woman the wife of uh, the judge Shuraih she had an Islamic knowledge so therefore she reminded herself and she reminded uh, her husband then she sat down ثم قعدت قال فالجأتني ان اخطب صار اخطب صار تبادل الخطابات وقف وقف وقال اما بعد فقلت قلت كلاما ان تصدقي فقد قلت كلاما ان تصدقي فيه وتثبتي عليه يكون لك ذخرا واجرا then she said, she sat down. Shureh, the judge, said that she obliged me to give a speech back. I stood and he sa- I, uh, I said to her, You have said a saying, if you were truthful and you keep to it, he becomes a provision and a reward for you. Shureh tell her, you have said the truth and you have to keep to that what you have said as well. And if you do not keep your promise, it will be a proof against you. Then he said to her, I like so-and-so, and I dislike so-and-so. If you find something good in me, spread it. And if you find something wrong in me, keep it secret and cover it. As the believing woman is a protection to her husband. And do not make a scandal of, of me or expose me publicly. She said to him, وَإِن تَدْعِيهِ يَكُنْ حُجَّةٌ عَلَيْكِ إِن تَدْعِيهِ أَحُبُّ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَأَكْرَهُ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَمَا وَجَدْتِ مِنْ حَسَنَا فَانْشُرِيهَا وَمَا وَجَدْتِ مِنْ سَيْئَا فَاسْتُرِيهَا وَالْمَرْأَةُ الْمُؤْمِنَا سِتِّيرَةٌ لَا تَفْضَحُ زَوْجَهَا فَهِ gave her a whole picture. He gave what he likes, what he dislikes. And he said, what you have said is true. Therefore, we live together. And if I dislike you, I will leave you. Therefore, divorce is always there. I leave you in a good manner as well. And he said to her, if you see something right from me, spread it amongst your friends and everything. But if you see something wrong, keep it between you and me as well. Because a good wife, she should not actually make some of the things which happen between wife and husband. Huh? public it should be and this is what our problems now in our days sometimes a private lives of people men and women between each other and it goes on a public domain and that is completely wrong and acceptable as well it should be kept between you two as well and then she said to him فقالت كيف نزور أهلي وأهلك قال نزورهم غبا مع انقطاع بين الحين والآخر لألا يملونا she said how we visit your family and my family he said we visit them from time to time with interruptions at intervals so that they do not get bored uh, with us nuisance فشي said after that question she said okay how do we because I have to go and visit my parents and you have to go and visit your parents. For how to? He said from time to time we go and visit uh, our parents as well and of course we don't have to uh, go always uh, to them and uh, uh, keep going every time but from time to time we go therefore you don't get bo- bored of us. The Prophet peace be upon him 
he said قال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم زر غبا تزداد حبا أخرج ابن حبان visit at intervals your in-laws and you will increase in love with each other narrated by ibn Habban so therefore this right of visiting your parents is always uh, uh, again uh, the right we cannot deny to the wife or your to the husband they have to visit their parents but you have to do it in intervals as well and then she went again and she asked قالت فمن من الجيران تحب أن أسمح لهن بدخول بيتك ومن تكره قال بنو فلان قوم صالحون وبنو فلان قوم غير ذلك she said whom from the neighbors you allow me to enter your house and those you do not like she said so and so are righteous and so and so are not so therefore she asked about the neighbors who she let those neighbors to come to their houses very clear and very specific to the questions as well and to the point as well and therefore you cannot allow people to come into your house if your husband disagree uh, on them as well because he's in charge of the house and therefore you should ask those questions about who he likes to come in and who he does not like to come in as well and because you just don't want sometimes bring the wrong people and invite problems as well with them. And قال ومضى علي عام عدت فيه إلى البيت فإذا أم زوجتي عندنا رحبت بها أجمل ترحيب وكانت قد علمت من ابنتها أنها في أهنا أجحال. He said a year passed since our marriage. I came into my house and found the mother of my wife. That is my mother-in-law, and she knew from her daughter she is very happy with her marriage and stay. Therefore, the mother of his wife came and just visited them as well, and she found that her daughter was very happy and had a good life and good marriage as well. قالت لي يا أبا أمية كيف وجدت زوجتك؟ قلت والله هي خير زوجة. قالت ما أوتي الرجال شرا من المرأة المدللة. My mother-in-law said how you found your wife. He replied that by Allah she is a good wife. She said that the worst of men to have spoiled woman beyond limit. So therefore the, she just uh, make sure that he doesn't spoil her too much as well. Now uh, therefore it means that فوق الحدود فأدب ما شئت أن تؤدب وهذب ما شئت أن تهذب ثم التفتت إلى ابنتها تأمرها بحسن السمع والطاعة manner her the way you want and discipline her the way you want then she looked to her hard daughter and asked her to listen and obey of course uh, Shureyh was a judge therefore he's a scholar he's a very knowledgeable person and she uh, uh, highlight to her daughter to have the opportunity to uh, benefit from his knowledge to be kind to him and to listen to him uh, in the obedience of Allah, of course. Now the الزوجان إذا بني زوجا زواجهما على طاعة الله الزوجان إذا بني زوجا زواجهما على طاعة الله عز وجل تولى الله في عليائه التوفيق بين الزوجين وإن بنياه على معصية لله the married couple, if they build their marriage, what we said before, on the obedience of Allah, praise and glory be to him, Allah will look after their success and of their marriage and their family. And if they build it on disobeying Allah, praise and glory be to him, then Satan will be in charge of their separation. So make sure that your family, your relationship, always is built on the pleasure of Allah. And to know that, you have to know what Allah says and what His Prophet says Allah and the Prophet وسلم, is an example for us. For the Islamic knowledge of marriage is very important. For it's why this pre-marriage course is very important for people to know before they go in marriage. Because once you know the knowledge, then you can get all your, uh, it's like a driving license of a car. If you know you have to pass your uh, driving uh, 
uh, code, you know, test, and of course, the, you have to learn how to drive your car. For sure, sure, in marriage as well, if you have the right knowledge and you have this course as well, and you know about marriage before you get married, I think you will have, uh, of course, a uh, percentage, a very high percentage to be successful in your uh, marriage. But the most important thing in marriage is to make this marriage built on the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his obedience. This is how you build your marriage. Build there your marriage on the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to follow what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us to do as well. Now, uh, of course, this is part is very, very important, of course, and uh, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, to make sure that the people who are not married to get them right spouse as well, and of course, to give them a right and righteous children as well. And those who have ch uh, wives and their children, may Allah bless you, inshallah, and is always right to go back to the right thing if you're doing something wrong. Stop what are you doing, uh, uh, regret what you have done, promise not do it again. And if you commit something wrong with your wife or husband, ask each other forgiveness as well and you move on. Now the, uh, the Prophet وسلم, as I said it at the beginning, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, taught us in many ahadith, prophetic statements about the various characteristics which one looks for in spouse and their relative importance. Among those uh, sayings are the following. Uh, of course, a woman is married for her wealth, her family status, her beauty, or her religion. You must go for the one with religion. May your hand be in the dust. If you will, if you fail to heed, that's right by Muslim. Also, choose carefully for your seed of spring. Marry those who are equivalent or qualified and give to them in marriage as well. Therefore, in the following section, we will discuss, if Allah wills, some of the most important characteristics that can be found in the Quran and the Sunnah, the prophetic tradition related to selecting a good spouse. First religion. Now, in the previous hadith, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, mentioned various characteristics that people, by their nature and custom, look for in a spouse. He did not advocate any of them, but merely stated them as facts of a human nature, except for the issue of religion, theme, that is, a prospective spouse's piety and practice of Islam, their fulfilling of what is mandatory, and their avoidance on what is unlawful, therefore obeying, and the pleasure of Allah, as we said it before. About this character, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he singled out this. He said, incumbent upon you to seek the one with piety. This is an order and quite different from this general statement at the beginning of the hadith which stated a woman can be married for her beauty, her wealth, her family status, but he singled out religion and separates the issue of religion from the other mundane issue and puts it in a category by itself. Because beauty, family status, huh? Uh, beauty, wealth, and family, those are given. Not you, nor the wife, nor the, uh, the husband have anything to do with this. The Allah who gave you their beauty, Allah who gives you, you uh, uh, choose for you the mother and father and the family you live in, and of course, the wealth he gives you is your risk as well. Those three are given. But the third, fourth one, you, because we have a free will, if you, you want to obey, to obey and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do what he has ordered you to do and avoid what he has told you not to do as well. Those is your free will and choice. It's why he made sure that you made your uh, choice on the fourth one. Of course, that doesn't mean that you should neglect 
the other one as well. You should look for them as well. Like uh, uh, Shuraih, the judge Shuraih, he had a, a righteous woman, but he spoke about righteous woman, and she had a beautiful, uh, she was a beautiful as well. And he had, she has a good family as well. So therefore he got all these kind of things uh, uh, in, uh, in the package as well. Also when the Prophet, peace be upon him, said at the end of the hadith, may your hand be in the dust, invoking this negative outcome on those who disregard this, his order, it can only refer to the order to seek the spouse with piety, since that is the only order in the hadith. We must be careful not to be superficial on this, in this issue. The mere wearing of the hijab, the female Muslim attire for women, or keeping a beard and praying in the masjid for men, while obvious requirement of piety do not by themselves guarantee it. There are many people who at first glance appear to be abiding by Islam, but upon closer inspection, they have an altogether incorrect understanding of it. And Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, once told someone who had testified to the goodness and he vetted somebody else, a person by the fact he had seen him in the masjid, that he did not know him, didn't know him enough, and because he hasn't, because due to him not having dealing with him, uh, uh, with him or involved in money with him or traveled with him as well or lived with him as well. Therefore, you should not just judge somebody by the appearances, but you should look in depth in their character as well. Now, the characteristic of piety applies to the groom just as much as to the bride. Therefore, for the righteousness, as we said, uh, men choose for those four characteristics. Women can choose for the four characteristics as well. But the last one, but not least, religious character and piety should be the most you should be looking for because the other three, they, do, they may not last, but the fourth one will last forever, not in this life and for the here after as well. So therefore, the, uh, the, uh, the, the character of piety applies to the groom just as much as to the bride. The guardian of the woman should make this his first and top priority, just as the man looking for a, wa a wife should make it his. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, if someone with whose piety and character you are satisfied comes to you, marry to him. If you do not do so, there will be trial in the earth and great deal of uh, evil. For the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make it a very important part. Now, piety, we spoke about it. Now, character and behavior. In the previous hadith addressed to those in charge of marital affairs of Muslim women and girls, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, command them to facilitate their marriage when they are satisfied with two issues, the faith of the suitor and his character. Character is an ex of extreme importance in Islam and goes hand in hand with faith and piety. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, has even described it as the purpose of his mission to mankind, as we can see from the following uh, saying. I have only been sent to compliment good manners. Now, this is to إِلَىٰ أُكْمِلَ Therefore, the Prophet وسلم, he was sent to uh, first and foremost to uh, uh, compliment good character and good manners. I am a guarantor of a house in the highest part of paradise for one who makes his character good. Righteousness is good character. For therefore, taqwa is good, husn uh, khuluq. Therefore, righteousness is good character. The believers with the most complete iman are those, faith, are those with the best character. In the Quran, Allah establishes the relation of the issue to marriage, saying what means bad women are for bad men and bad men are for bad women. And good women are for good men, and good men are for good women. Quran chapter 24, verse 26. The word bad is in above verse means unclean, despicable, not good, filthy. It's a very strong word. And the word good, al-khabithun al-khabithat, wa tayyibun al-tayyibat, khabith 
and tayyib. The word good can uh, 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 give an understanding of cleanness, purity, as well as goodness as well. And one of the important issues of character in the mates is the quality of intimacy. This means to be kind, loving, compassionate, compassionate, the Prophet, peace be upon him, marry the loving and friendly and the childbearing, for I shall outstrip the other nation with your numbers on doomsday. Therefore, the prospective spouse must ask and find about the other person's behavior and manners. As a sign also, one may look at the manners and behavior of the other person's family. For often, but not always, the behavior of people of the same family are similar. In other words, some characteristics usually run within the family, uh, and therefore, whether good or bad, tend to run in some families such as anger, politeness, stinginess, generosity, lying, truthfulness, and so forth, and so on and so forth. Therefore, if to find out more is to find the family members as well, how they behave themselves. The other characteristic you look for is childbearing. The Prophet, peace be upon him, recommended men to marry women who are childbearing. This characteristic is related to some of the goals and purposes of marriage that were mentioned earlier, such as enlarging the Muslim community, raising pious families as cornerstones of society, and so forth. The scholars mentioned that a man can look at woman's female relatives to get an idea whether she is apt to get pregnant easily and often or not. This attributes, this attributes, uh, as we said, the uh, the, uh, the 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 Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's it should be uh, run within the family, and you can find out if she uh, uh, she can have children and she can be pregnant as well. This attribute should also apply to the man. For example, a Muslim man who had vasectomy for it before getting married would not be able to have to be an appropriate husband for a Muslim girl getting married for the first time. Therefore, he should know about that as well. Now, virginity as well is a quality to look for in spouse. Therefore, somebody who has never been married should look for some uh, somebody, a spouse who shall not be married. Therefore, they should go for somebody. Uh, a uh, man, a woman who have not been married at all. Virginity, there are many hadith saying which recommend the man to marry a virgin woman and vice versa, such as marry virgin for they have sweeter mouth, more productive wombs, and more pleased with less. Other narrative indicate that she is more likely to be pleased by a man and less likely to be devious or deceiving. Jabir may not be pleased with him, married an older and previously married woman. So the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, remarked, Why not a virgin? You could have played with her and she played with you. The scholar have stressed that this, uh, this good attribute applies to the husband just as it applies to the wife. One of them wrote, Similarly, it is preferred for a person not to marry his daughter except to a virgin man if she has never been married before. And Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah pleased with him, once heard about a woman who was married to an elderly man. So he said, O oh people, fear Allah and marry a man to a woman who is similar to him and marry, marry, uh, uh, marry a woman to a man who is similar to her as well. Therefore, you should marry people who are not married before as well. Now, uh, one of the aspects, the last one which we look for, inshallah, is the... Uh, the uh, the uh, now let us discuss the non-Muslim woman who is considered in marriage to a Muslim man, and I explain the role of the Islam in a man's life and his children's. Now let's discuss the role of Islam in the life of non-Muslim wife. Yes, I know that sounds contradictory, but it's not really. Now, first of all, the Muslim men are free to marry people of the book. This means that a Muslim man can marry a practicing Christian or Jew. If you are neither of these, run, your marriage will not be accepted Islamically, and chances are good that he will, he will come to a regretted decision as well. Now, this is very important, and trust me when I say that would not be a pleasant situation for anyone. If you are a person of the book, Christian or Jew, and your marriage 
would be acceptable from an Islamic standpoint, uh, for this is uh, we're talking about men marrying because a Muslim woman cannot marry uh, somebody who is not a Muslim. You will be free to practice your religion and celebrate your holidays. However, Islam would still play a huge role in your life because once you marry a Muslim man, therefore that Muslim man, Islam is his way of life. Religion means deen is a way of life. Therefore, if you are uh, going for a Muslim man, you should know that his life is all Islam if he is Muslim and he is practicing Muslim as well. While some people are able to come to make uh, uh, Islam and their religion different from their life, it's not usually, uh, most Muslims are not like that. Islam plays a part in every part of their life. There are rules for eating, drinking, praying, cleaning, dressing, and greeting guests, just to name a few. There are even rules for love making as well. Therefore, Islam is A to Z, it's comprehensive, and uh, everything is set in Islam. The, um, uh, even the, the smallest detail, Islam has a say in it as well. Even if your Muslim husband fully intends to keep religion separate, it just isn't possible. His religion is likely ingrained in his very being in ways that he does not even realize. Even if he accepts the fact that you do not plant, uh, uh, you do not plan to become a Muslim, he will expect the household to be uh, Islamic as well. Chances are good that he will expect you to dress more conservatively. Most Muslims are taught that a woman saves her beauty for her husband. Very few Muslim men will tolerate their wives wearing revealing clothing. Your Muslim husband will probably not allow pork or alcohol in the house. You will probably be expected to limit your interaction with non-family males. In addition, there are often culture clashes in mixed marriages. Since the two of you will come from different cultural and religious background, clashes are inevitable without a common faith to unite you. It could be difficult to find a common ground sometimes. Again, I'm not trying to convince you to cancel your wedding if you are trying to get married. I have known some couples who have successfully managed a mixed faith marriage. I simply want you to think of all angles before you make the decision. Use these blog entries as conversation starters. In another entry, I will shall I give you specific questions to ask and topics to explore as well. Now, the of course, this is just uh, uh, some of the things which we have uh, uh, this in second lecture in introduction to pre-marriage course. And we said that the central to this and the main pillar is that you build your marriage for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should have a knowledge uh, about Islam, about Islam, about marriage in Islam and don't build your uh, knowledge on experiences because even your parents sometimes their marriage is not, um, or, uh, is not a model for you. The model for us is the Prophet sallallahu marriage and he married many uh, uh, wives from Khadija, Aisha, Abu Salama, all this, every aspect of his marriage has something to tell us about a marriage and how we conduct ourselves. For the pre-marriage course is a very important for you and I wish that you will go to uh, my website, go to www.abzconsultancytraining.com uh, and look there, inshallah, you can register as well. And those marriages course, inshallah, we start them. And it will be on uh, individual basis as well, because we'll enter in the details, and the devil is in the details as well. But what I try to give you in the second lecture as well, uh, qualities which are comprehensive to look for, and the most important thing as well is to remember that uh, story of Shuraih, the judge, with his wife, his righteous wife, what she uh, spoke to as well. So therefore, uh, 
with that, inshallah, I hope inshallah you find the uh, uh, the topic and the lecture very very interesting. Uh, we uh, ask Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa taala, inshallah, for those uh, who have uh, married, and inshallah, may Allah bless you, bless your children as well, and uh, uh, give you inshallah provision and bless your health and increase your, your iman as well. And those who have not married yet, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make it easy for you to find a spouse uh, equivalent to you as well, according to those criteria as well. And of course, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, join you in uh, goodness as well and bless your families as well. And say, oh Allah, help the couple to what you love and pleased with and join both of them in goodness and give them many righteous children and grant their family success and guidance and make this gathering blessed and our departure seedless and do not make from us or amongst us unhappy or denied your mercy and of course subhanakallahu wa bihamdik nashhadu la ilaha saqfiruka wa tubu laik glory be to Allah and with your praise we bear witness that there is no God but Allah ask your forgiveness and repond to you of course inshallah you can have more details and next week inshallah we'll have a 6 30 again another lecture and this is just an introduction to uh, the pre-marriage course as well if you have any questions you can uh, put them uh, on my facebook uh, underneath on the comment on this uh, lecture and of course inshallah we hope that you find this uh, lecture beneficial inshallah and spread the news to other people and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, until we meet again may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you wa jazakumullahu khair wa subhanakallah wa bihamdik nashahadu wa astaghfiru wa kutubu lik wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh